probably make up for real at some point, right? Well, we've learned a lot. Let's go over everything that we know so far. Ahem. <coughs> Uh, sorry for popping up out of nowhere. Again. <laughs> uh, why do you look so awkward? Oh, is there something you need from us? Okay, I won't beat around the bush. Oh, and I'm sorry for interrupting your rest. I'll treat you to some charcoal grilled steak to make up for it. Awesome! Just give us your orders! Hey, friends don't order each other around. I'm just here to share some news. Remember what we talked about before parting ways? Oh yeah, you mentioned how Auroron has always wanted to save Natlan, and something about his soul being fragmented. Paimon and the Traveler discussed it after you left, and we think Auroron is probably back with the Captain. What do you think? I agree with your hypothesis. And just now, I confirmed it myself. Auroron came back. He helped the Masters of the Nightwind defend our camp. What? He came back? I told him to give up whatever he's doing, but he refused. He said they're just one step away from success, so there's no way he can back out now. Apparently, he came back to fulfill his duty to our tribe. When he left, he said it was because he still has a duty to Natlan as a whole. I'm not surprised you let him go at all! I had to prioritize my tribe. Besides, the situation was intense. I couldn't focus on outside and inside threats at the same time. Plus, he was on guard. He knew I would try to go after him, so he made sure to keep his distance. I kept an eye out for a good opportunity, but it never came. Ugh, all these years of calling me Granny, and I couldn't do a single thing for him in the end. Don't say that! Your tribe all raised him together, right? That couldn't have been easy. <sighs> You're right. Seeing him come back reminded me of when he was little. Running around the tribe, dropping by random houses right and left. He's not only a child of the Masters of the Nightwind, but a child of Natlan. It's only natural for a child to want to do something for their family. Besides, Auroron is my apprentice. He might have a few tricks up his sleeve, but I guarantee I know every single one. Wait, what are you saying? Look. Remember how I said Auroron's soul is fragmented? This is the talisman I created to keep it stable. And this gem is what makes the talisman work. It just so happens that Auroron is due for a gem replacement. Uh, since I can't get close to him, I put the new gem in a supply bag and asked Aoife to bring it to him. You guys know Aoife, right? No? Well, he's a pretty famous vet around these parts. He's always bringing me all sorts of things, and he happens to be very good friends with Auroron. Aoife doesn't know what's going on, so he agreed, no questions asked. Auroron would find the gem as soon as he opened the bag. He knows how important it is, so I knew he would make the switch. He probably suspected that I tampered with it. But here's the catch. The trick is on the bag. The moment he touched it, a portion of his memories were copied onto the old gem, which he no longer needed. That's amazing. You can do something like that? Uh, most people can't. But I can. That trick he used to bring you to the Night Kingdom isn't anything special, by the way. My technique is much more subtle. He won't notice anything. So in other words, we have a whole backup of Auroron's memories in this gem! <laughs> the kid thinks he can take me on? <laughs> like I wasn't the one who taught him everything he knows? That's amazing, Seat Lolly! Let's take a look right away! Once we get to the bottom of this, we can finally track him down. Uh, I know he thinks of me as his grandma, but do you think he'll get mad at me for this? You can be honest. Huh, that's a tough question. Paimon doesn't have a grandma, so she's not the best person to ask. 
To be honest, I've always doubted my ability to look after him. I didn't stop the ceremony all those years ago, and now I'm useless again. But if I stop here, it will haunt me until I'm 500 years old. Every night I'll wake up in a fit of anger. <laughs> I don't scare that easy. Still, if I back away from this and something happens to Auroron, I would never forgive myself. <sighs> I need to look at his memory. Even if he resents me, refuses to see me, or runs away for good, I don't care, and I won't blame him. A family does whatever it takes to protect their own. You sure you'll be okay? We can come with you if you want. Did you just say... you'll come with me? Is that okay? We have a pretty good reason to see it too, don't we? Because... uh... Right! We need leads on the Fatui. You... really mean it? Oh, fine. You can come. Just promise me you'll see this through. No backing out. Got it? Don't worry, we're professional adventurers! Ah, well, then I place my trust in your professionalism. Alright, time to sneak into someone else's memory and engage in some... Uh... Unwanted spying. <clears throat> uh, you heard it here first. I wouldn't be doing this if I had any other choice. <sighs> Are you ready? Look how good you're doing. You'll grow into nice big radishes in the future. And you? Aoife says you're taking up too much space, but I think you're a good tree. What do you think? Hey! How's it going, Auroron? Good. How are you, Uncle Okanbi? Ah! Can't complain. What you up to? Naming your vegetables again? No, just some idle conversation. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. What did they say? They told me you were coming and that you would take some produce with you. Ha! <laughs> Only if you're offering. By the way, I ran into Aoife yesterday. He told me Chaska's fostering a Saurian at his place. Said the thing trampled over a part of your radish garden. I hope you two didn't get into a huge fight. No, don't worry. I'll find a way for him to make it up to me. I've already wrapped your share of the produce. Here you go. You really knew I was coming. That's pretty amazing. Light up the smoke and you can see the path through the shadows. That's what everyone says. Hey, have you seen that strange group of people that just appeared out of nowhere? Appeared out of nowhere? I don't think so. It's the Fatui. Their leader seems like a big deal. He didn't bring many men with him, but they're all elite warriors. It seems like they're looking for someone, but I wouldn't go around asking too many questions. If you run into them, be careful. You're from the Masters of the Nightwind, are you not? Why do you live here alone? I enjoy living by myself out in the wild. I guess you're from the Fatui, the one everyone's calling a big deal. Not an inaccurate description. I'm looking for someone who may be known to you. Sitlali is her name. Granny? What does an outlander want with her? I've heard the name. You have business with her? <sighs> I 
There's no point to further questioning if you insist on hiding things from me. I shall seek answers elsewhere. Oh, he could tell I was lying, and now he's leaving? He gave up just like that? Hey! At least tell me why you're looking for Sidlali. It's none of your concern. I have my own means of tracking her down. Why are the Fatui looking for her? What does she have to do with them? I can't just let them go like this. I have to figure out what they're planning. <sighs> I've just been studying the ley lines and asking for leads on Granny. I can definitely rule out some sort of invasion. The situation has seen no true improvement. The Pyro Archon did not fulfill her promise. My lord! Hmm? Ignore him. He is no threat. He knows I'm following him, but he doesn't seem to care. He's strong, I can tell. But there's something unusual about him and also familiar in some way. I can't describe it. Ugh. What is it? My lord, I... I feel dizzy. A ley line disturbance. Certain presences have been forced to wander outside the rightful realm. was a spell from the Masters of the Nightwind. How did he know that? Is he sending those escaped souls back into the ley lines? How did he do that so easily? Soul faring is supposed to be extremely difficult. This could be related to why he's searching for Granny. Ah, I feel much better. Thank you, my lord. Think nothing of it. Stay vigilant, and continue to gather information. The Abyss could attack at any moment. If you notice any irregularities, assume drill formation and be prepared to fight. However, there is no reason to over-engage. Information is our first priority. Yes, sir! Why are the Fatui fighting against the Abyss? Do they really mean us no harm? I've been following him this whole time and still they ignore me? Do they really not care? It seems like his subordinates refer to him as the captain. Never heard of him before. And now he's headed to the stadium. That's unusual. Oh, what is he gonna do? You two, with me. Everyone else, wait here as instructed. Send word to the other teams to retreat immediately if this fails. Yes, sir! He's going inside? But the Pyro Archon is in there. What does he want with her? Forgive me, my lord. Allow me to check one more time. Do you truly wish to do this? <sighs> the time for idle observation is over. It now falls on me to act. This nation is out of time. Yes, sir. He just walked straight into the stadium. What is he gonna do? They're both incredibly strong. How long will they have to fight until someone comes out on top? <gasps> Wait, this feeling. Just like the other day near the ley lines, it's faint. Like a soul's trying to escape. Where is it coming from? Is that why he's looking for Granny? 
If he dies here, then all clues will be lost. I can't let that happen. As for you, I must confess, I did not expect that little trick of yours to save the day. No matter how dense the fog, as long as the sun remains, we cannot turn day into night. She could have dispelled it. She simply chose not to. <sighs> you don't have much time, and you're injured on top of that. What do you plan to do next? I'm beginning to see just how useful you may turn out to be. You... heard something from here, didn't you? <coughs> no need to force yourself. I've never seen anyone match the Pyro Archon in battle before. Hmm. I didn't expect you to intervene at such a critical moment. You know I've been following you. Why didn't you stop me? When walking in the forest, it is only natural to encounter wild beasts. However, not every beast has the courage to come out and bite. And yet, one of those very beasts saved your life. Hmm. <laughs> then speak. What do you want? I didn't save you because I wanted something. My soul is more perceptive than others. I can sense that the ley lines are extremely weak. <sighs> I don't know what the Pyro Archon is planning. <sighs> can she really save us? The questions you asked her just now, well, I've had very similar doubts. So I felt like I had to help you. Ah. So, you can tell the truth. That was quite a reckless decision to make. I'm not sure you realize that. There's no turning back for me now. What I did back there is going to get me in a lot of trouble. You attacked the Pyro Archon in broad daylight and I used my spell to save you. A single glance was likely all it took for her to recognize my tribe. So... We're in the same boat. Seem to care little for my thoughts on the matter. It's too late for that. Start from the beginning. Why are you looking for Sitlali? Do you know her? Explain your relation to her first. I know you two are acquainted. It was obvious the moment I mentioned her name. Sitlali is my elder and my teacher. She taught me everything I know. It's my duty to protect her. If you truly wish to protect her, you should have let me perish at the Pyro Archon's hand. Yet, you chose otherwise. Do I really need to tell you what that means? I want to do something to change Natland for the better. Something I can accomplish with my own two hands. You're stranger than anyone I've ever met. But maybe... Just maybe you can show me the way. Strange. <laughs> Cizalali is said to be the legendary Granny Eatstli, someone capable of communicating with the Wyub, and the Wyub are the key to information on the Night Kingdom. Why do you need knowledge on the Night Kingdom? That is not something you need to know. Don't forget, I saved your life. Do you not believe the Fatui capable of betraying a debt? People can lie, but souls cannot. I can tell there's a weight to your soul. A sense of justice. You may not live among your tribe, but you certainly know their tricks. I apologize for my rash judgment. You are more capable than I imagined. Let's go. We'll see if you have what it takes to join my plan.
I see. Interesting approach. Worth trying, I think. Rather than weaving a net to protect the ley lines, this method would address the root problem by reconstructing the ley lines themselves. Traveler, Paimon. Are you two all right? Uh, Paimon's fine, just, um, <laughs> a little dizzy. Of course. I'm just... Oh, I'm so mad at him! <sighs> After everything, he still can't let go of the past. For some reason, he thinks he owes something to the people who cared for him. <laughs> Stubborn, self-righteous fool. Where's that gonna get him? Now that he's all grown up, he thinks no one can tell him what to do? He thinks he can just... run away whenever he wants! <sighs> I'll show him. If he tries to run one more time, he's got another thing coming. Maybe stubbornness runs in the family! Like grandmother, like grandson, as they say! Is that supposed to be a compliment? Huh! That kid's got nothing on me. <sighs> anyway... Back to what we just saw... I don't even know what to make of it. Yeah, the captain seriously wants to... Reconstruct the ley lines? What does that even mean? Something like, the Loom of Fate, maybe? But how does it help with the Abyss? The Loom of Fate? Oh, I... It's kind of hard to explain. Basically, it's a device from Conrio that has unbelievable power. Anyway... If he really wants to manipulate the Ley Lines, Everyone in that land will be affected. Oh, this is big. Which means... The captain has been honest from the very beginning. Auroron's memory proves that. Why is he so obsessed with saving that land? Oh, we've got to tell Moika about this right away! Yes. She needs to know about this. Now.